in our new startup file. We are going to take all of this and do a good old select all and delete because we don't need any of this. We're going to be making a ragdoll arm, so we need to center that cursor, add a cube, but because we need this to be a floppy noodle arm, we need to scale it down just a little bit. Scale at the Z, we're going to do three looks good. So scale it three units. We're going to bring this up to about level with the surface of our grid. We are going to then press tab and add a couple of loop cuts in here. I like to just add a random amount and then squeeze them into the middle. And then on the hand parts, we're going to just add a couple more towards the edge. It'll make it nice so when we add the armature, it's not going to be too funky looking. It's still going to be funky looking. But let's do something like uh, make this horizon a very dark color so I can actually see what I'm doing. We're going to shift S cursor to select and then we're going to add a good old armature single bone we will take this single bone and just do a good old thing match it up with the bottom then we're going to get it as close to the middle as possible we're going to extrude that bone and make ourselves a little rig here so just control P with automatic weights and now we should have a good old noodle arm and so if we rotate that would you look at that good old noodle arm sweet now we can take this noodle arm and add more cubes because that's what we always wanted in life so we're going to add this cube we're going to extrude it into a little rectangle probably not that much and then extrude it again not extrude it but you know what I mean make two of them duplicate so we're gonna add that now we can take both of these and make them rigid body objects except we'll just do one for now make it a cube and everything looks good for now so we'll just select both of them copy copy physics now they're both good old boys that like to freak out but we don't want that to happen. So we're going to take our arm, make it a no collisions object. Oops. We're not going to save yet. Actually, maybe we should ragdoll stuff video. And we'll just save that. Yeah, perfect. Cool. So now that we have all that, it'll just fall. We're going to add, actually, let's go center add a plane just lower that plane a little bit that way the cubes have something to fall on now we need to take these cubes give them a constraint yeah except let's do it the other way around so we're going to actually make the top take this top cube give it a rigid body constraint select our bottom cube and we should actually name these so we'll call this B for bottom and call this one T for top super creative we also need to do this with the bones so we're gonna go into tab mode click on each of the bones and say uh, B and then take the top bone and put T or whatever you want we'll also take the main cube arm and just call it arm as you can see I don't like to capitalize anything it just makes it easier for me later okay now we are going to take all this and make our constraints. So we'll go to our constraints again. Now we'll have B, which will want to be a hinge. Display pivot, and we want this pivot to go probably, let's try, negative one. Perfect. So now, if we let it go, would you look at that? In fact, actually, let's try going negative too much, negative one, one. Would you look at that, it's beautiful. Okay, so now we need to take these bones and I believe in Alt P clear parent. So now we can move each bone individually, but if we go into pose mode, it will still control our object. Would you look at that, beautiful. It's still kind of weird, but now what we could do is move it around. So we're going to take our bone here and 
click on our physics object, select our physics object, take our bone and go to offset. Now I can rotate on the x-axis 90 degrees. Uh, let's uh, try that a little differently. Let's go into tab and then cursor to offset. Oh, it's not going to do what I want, is it? So cursor. All right, that's better. We'll select. I guess it's rotating up here, isn't it? All right, so rotate X 90 degrees. Cursor. Oh, look at that. Perfect. So I can do the same thing with our bottom. So we'll select our physics object again. Select. And then we shall rotate x 90 degrees do our same shift s yeah shift s to cursor now both the bones have their their own little object here and it's gonna look really funky for now but it's fine because it'll all be controlled by our physics objects later so now we need to add constraints to our bones so we'll take our t-bone here and go to the bone constraint and add a location and a rotation so now we can select our physics objects here on both of these and it's going to do something really crazy like this and then go to apply apply pose reset pose we need to make sure all the poses are reset that way we don't get that funky mess that we always have so we'll take the other bone and do the same thing location and rotation so select our b block here do that and then we can just go pose apply Apply reset pose. I know there's a short key, shortcut key somewhere, and I cannot remember what it is, but that's fine. Eh, whatever. Okay, so we're going to take all these and go into game logic. Press three on the keyboard, and because I like it, I like to be in texture mode. Then, actually, might as well just go into wire mode. So wireframe, add an always. Make that always a true. And then we shall add an armature. Take this armature, connect it, run armature. Should always be there at default, doesn't really matter. And then we can turn this into an object, press save and press P. So now our object is skinned ragdoll. Would you look at that, nice floppy boy. So now what we can do is take these two cubes, these two cubes, and we can just hit the camera icon. This will basically go into our property setting and hit it as invisible. So now if we press, if we go out of Wirefarm, we'll go into material, click on our landscape, and look at that. A nice skinned ragdoll. We can even give it a sh shader. Make it like a skin tone because it is an arm. Just do that kind. Get rid of that intensity. Okay, press P. Would you look at that? It's an arm. And we can even be fancy and give it like a sun. Look at that. Sweet. But because our sun's not fancy, it doesn't have a shadow. There we go. Woo! Floppy boys. Now, what we can do is take this boy, click all the uh, properties here, press T, go to relations, new group, call this group rag doll arm cool gra <laughs> all arm good enough so we can take this go into a we'll actually take this whole selected put it into this layer go into our opposite layer go to group instance whatever i spelled there transform origin to volume go into our main scene again add a good old-fashioned empty object now we can just say uh, key whoops keyboard make it like K then edit object we're gonna add in our randomly spelled really bad spelling uh, object then we're going to press P Press K and look at that. Look at all those floppy boys on the ground. We can even go into material and do it too. Just press our K button. And now we got a bunch of skinned rag dolls. Oh man, that's pretty sweet. Oh yeah. If you want to see the uh, the, the old video that uh, was made, it's by the uh, Timster. 
go to his YouTube channel. A bunch of cool stuff. That's where I learned all of my Blender game engine uh, things. But he had an old video. I just wanted to see if I could actually recreate it without any coding or anything. But that's it. No coding involved. Ragdolls. Spawning ragdolls. And it doesn't seem to be too, uh, too intensive. I mean, I'm still running at 60 frames even after all these ragdolls are spawned. Pretty sweet. Well, that's all for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be taking these flop boys and making a full-on rig with them. So stay tuned for that. Little preview. Woo! All right. Anyways, y'all have a good one, and I'll see you in the next.